of the Muskegon Channel. It's Andy O'Reilly, and you may recognize that face. He's been on. Well, he's been on a couple of times. I, you? I, I've been. I've been through your camera once. Once or twice. Or Jack Page is here, and uh, Jack is a man of many hats, like most of us here are in town. And this time, he's uh, kind of hooked up and uh, invited me out for a. Uh, well, it's something we haven't tried yet. A little informational. Right. Uh, kind of sponsored talk about something that's coming up and sure. let's talk a little bit about what what's going on here. It's coming up next Monday night. It's a discussion about medical marijuana and how it's going to impact the Eggleston area and because I mean because this is this is something that's coming. I mean yeah. it's already been approved. It's been Med it? medical's been approved for 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 a couple three years it's, now. It's longer than that. Yeah 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 end. yeah. We're going we're going on yeah we we we've, we've been we've been working as caregivers sure. for 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 seven or eight years now. Okay and. Uh, and now with the with the changes in the laws, uh, we're just looking to become a little more mainstream, yep. and uh, and wanting to benefit here in the Eggleston community, and so help, and help the people here in Eggleston. And so. this is going to be a little bit bigger than most people are used to, because right now we're seeing a lot of caregivers that are growing up to twelve plants for people and Correct. things like that. But this is tell me a little bit first of all about the group. Tell me about what's the name of the group. Well, uh, our group is Eggleston Grows Green. Okay. Uh, and we are out here right on the corner of Maple Island and Apple Avenue. Okay. Uh, you'll see that there's some nice nice uh, looking improvements here to yeah. the Apple Avenue area right well, now. Yeah, you got kind of a tie into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The restaurant the restaurant's Burning coming Steer. strong, Burning Steer is coming strong and right across the street uh, is going to be our uh, provisioning center okay. for, for the medical side. Just down the street on Apple Avenue, you'll see some nice, brand new, gorgeous pole barn buildings. Uh, and that that's will be that will be our production facility. Okay. And then uh, a little ways down uh, Maple Island Road and White Road will be our processing center. Okay. Uh, and this is yeah, it's it's scaling up a little larger than than most caregivers are used to. Uh, uh, we're now uh, seeking license for 4,500 plants. Wow. So it's it's going to be a, a, a fairly large operation. Uh, but one of the benefits to Eggleston is, is we're probably looking at between the restaurant and, and the grow operations, about 130 to 150 in employment. No is, is going to be the num the number of the number of jobs we're going to be bringing right here. So Eggleston. it's creating jobs, and it's it's it, it's already creating jobs. We have we probably have uh, 20 25 people in the construction phase right now, no and kidding. these are all local people. I mean, we didn't go outside of the community to hire anybody. Uh, literally right across the right. Uh, the next house down is one of our construction leads. No kidding. Uh, yep, we hired, uh, we source a lot of our materials out of Ravana and out of Sethco, right on down, yep. straight down here. So we're trying to be as local focused as we can. Good thing. Keeping the money here in our community. This is where Carl wants to invest it. It's uh, uh, So this is where we want to be. All right. So let's, let, it's October 8th is, is the discussion. Monday, October 8th. And this is an informational thing. All informational. We're just bringing in. We're bringing in some some expert speakers. Okay. Uh, they can talk to different areas. Some on community outreach and development. What they've seen in other communities that have that have already have these uh, these these uh, operations operations sure. moving along. Some on cultivation and testing. So you can feel comfortable about uh, anything that that we're producing is going to be thoroughly vetted and tested. So we don't have any uh, any. Surprises. Any surprises or yeah. anything like that? Right. Uh, we're gonna have le we're gonna have legal people coming in to talk about the legality, and uh, and then we also have some people coming in to talk about community outreach and benef direct benefits to patients. Sure. Testimonials from patients that you know. Uh, I know one one girl personally that she was in a wheelchair until age four. We started her on a regiment, and uh, now she's up in Whitehall running the soccer fields. Is that right? She's out of her chair, and wow. she's running the soccer fields. All right. So the informational thing's coming up October eighth, but let's let's give everybody a little advance too. Okay. This isn't some fly by night, let's grow pot no. type thing at all. No. Now you, and and for people out there that aren't, aren't familiar with this at all, there are different strains that can be grown. Some of which have no THC in them at Absolutely all. And that's not. where that's where. I think a lot of the confusion starts getting in there is because, you know, oh, everybody's going to be a high on and all this other kind and of stuff, but there are direct medical benefits, proven medical benefits, correct, that you can actually remove the THC from this plant completely and still get. Totally. Okay. Uh, currently, there are many, many strains of CBD oil that contain zero THC. Okay. Uh, these would not do affect you mentally one one iota at all. They're strictly bred and strain strains that are bred for specific ailments, anxiety, arthritis. Uh, we have uh, 
definitely seizure medications. We, we've had very great success in, in seizure controls with CBD oils. Sure. And these have absolutely none of the THC properties in right. them. That's not what we're actually you know, looking for. We, and we're not, at, we're not promoting at all the recreational side of marijuana. That's not our gig. Sure. We, we, we strictly want to try to help people that have a specific medical ailment that then we can probably dial in something that they can come and get some relief from their ailment. Whether it cures them, whether it provides symptomatic relief, hard to say it depends on the ailment. That kind of thing you know, too. But, but it's, it's the same, and we're operating the same way just like a medical doctors would and things like that. We come in, you tell us what, our, what, what your ailment is. It might not be something we can treat right then that day. Sure. It, you know, we might have to, okay, well, we're gonna look for something that we'll, what we can tailor make to your, to, to your ailment and come back and see us and we'll try to get you on that and start it. Okay. Uh, we've had patients that uh, go anywhere from five years old to 89 years and old. Again, and again, one of our hugest segments right now is the over 60 crowd. Really? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, as people are aging and more ailments come on and everything, we're able to provide them some relief in some of their symptoms. You got a personal story with this. I do. Tell me a little bit. Can you? Do, are you comfortable? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my stepfather uh, was, my stepfather died of an ailment called pulmonary fibrosis, right. which was fibers in the lungs. And it was an incurable, you know, nothing they could do other than a, a, hung, a, lart, a lung heart transplant. Uh, so we had a slow slide and progression down for five to six years. Yeah. During that time, it, you know, his pain was increasing, his mobility was lessening, everything, all the things you'd, sim you'd see in a terminal patient. Right. We were able to provide him with quality of life for probably an additional two to three years, where he could still function uh, in some of the roles he had. He was a vice mayor of the city of Muskegon. He was a, count, uh, a planning commissioner for yeah. city. He was still trying, he was working on getting the SAPI site finally taken down and everything before any all that happened my wow. stepfather was involved in that and i was really grateful that we could we could help him but out. you found the cure through cbds and, and edibles we did. and all that kind we of stuff. did it, yeah it had nothing to do with smoking it had anything right. like that we were strictly treating him with an oil and an edible how about that and uh and yeah that there's there's no reason to believe or think that uh you're going to come into our place and strictly get high right that's not what we're about right uh some of the strains that help with THC, I can say, do have some benefit. But I also want to say that if you are THC, you know, if you have an issue with the THC bond, there are many, many products that we can work at to where wow. you'll see none of them. Now, November's coming up. There's going to be a vote correct, to, for legalization of recreational marijuana. Correct. I was pretty clear in my candidacy, you know, when I ran for the 91st district that, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a former alcoholic, I get. I shouldn't even say former alcoholic. I am an alcoholic. Uh, you're, you're that for life. Um, I I I don't have a problem with recreational use. Well, I, I don't want people under 21 using it. I don't want people driving under correct. the influence. Um, I think that anything that applies to alcohol should apply to to, to using and, and operating a vehicle. As, as far as and that, that's as far as and that's goes. what the recreational ballot measure is all about. Right. Just to regulate it exactly how we regulate alcohol. Right, right. And that's all. That's all the recreational community is asking for. Yeah. They're not. They're not asking for anything special. And and I I don't I don't believe that we should. You know, there. Obviously, keeping alcohol or marijuana or anything away from a child yep. or anything like that is a given yeah that's just a no-brainer uh and here here with our facility and everything we'll have such stringent control over the ids and everything of people coming in yeah. that none of that would ever be an issue unless it's done outside of our right. facility which you know and we will actually taking measures to tamp that down Do what you can. Yeah. yeah we we've got a lot of security in place to Good. where none of that none of any of that will never affect here are direct operations. So October eighth, this thing comes up. I mean, there's you, you got to imagine that there's going to be some people there that are, are going to be, you know, anti against. Yes. So valid concerns. Sure. Don't want to don't want to you know minimize their concerns because I I know I, I share some of them. I get it. I would worry that you know proliferation of one thing is going to lead to a next one and sure. next one. Studies just haven't proven that that happens. Right. It's just proven. You go to the legal states already and you see that youth. Youth use has not increased. Uh, driving, you know, uh, yes, they are having some more issues with driving, 
that's a given. Do the time, do the you know, time. You know, yeah, exactly. Right. There's there, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't drive inebriated on any substance. That's nothing. I don't care what your substance is. Like it in or I you yeah. shouldn't you, that's just not what that's not what we're about. But what we're here at Eggleston is more about the medical side. Okay. We just we want to help people. And not only are we directly helping the patients, we can help the full Eggleston community by providing jobs, Work. providing tax revenue, sure. providing, these are all things that are gonna flow back into Eggleston that they didn't have before. And with barely an impact that you're, you're never even gonna know. Right. I mean, the, the caregiver grows that I know are located in right in residential areas and you don't know that they're there. We have state-of-the-art filtration. Yep. You're never gonna smell a thing. You're not gonna be impacted by it. We just wanna make sure we do it right we do it for the right reasons. And you want to be up front and, and we tell everybody up front. up front and out there. All right. What we have coming up at Eggleston for this meeting on, on Monday is uh, there's a ballot initiative here in Eggleston. As we jump through zoning and everything, some of the people in Eggleston have an issue with the zoning and where our placement of our okay. facilities are. We put those facilities in place by the state guidelines. State said they wanted us in A2 or C3 zoning. That's exactly where we put our facilities. Okay. Uh, it kitty corners up to some residential areas. People have concerns. They brought a ballot initiative. Perfectly valid. Sure. I think they should have their say. I totally agree with that. We just want to give some information out, put our side out, and let the people choose from there. Perfect. It is four to seven. It's coming up on October eighth at the VFW. Everything, everything that's good and happens at the happens VFW. At VFW. Yeah. They're great people. They're great people down and there. You've been, I, you've been known to flip a burger or two once, once or twice. So, so, so I'll be, I'll be cooking out there. Yeah. You, you can get a taste of a little burning steer cooking a little bit <laughs> prior to. I know some people You're have so been out there about the burning steer. Oh man, I love watching it. I've been watch. I've been working on this project for <laughs> two and a half years now, and. Uh, I really fell in love with this east end of town out yeah. here doing it yeah, it's because I, I've always been a west ender right. and uh, I've seen your post about Wolf Lake yeah. and everything like that. Now, here, now, now I'm finding out why yeah. I wanted to locate out here. Good area. Yeah. All right. So come on out. Be a part of it. It's Monday, October 8th at the VFW on Apple Avenue. What time? Four to seven. Four to seven. Four to seven. Speakers, get your voice heard. Be a part of it. It's going to be a... a, a what yep. you guys have going here, I mean... It's it's just informational. We just want to give our side. And yeah, we're welcome all, all opinions, positive, negative, anything. The negative opinions, honestly, they help us. They count. They help us. Sure. Because you know, these are people's concerns. These are people's lives. We get it. Yeah. You know, we, we want to be above board. So There you go. Yeah. Eggleston Grows Green. Next Monday, be out here at the VFW and learn all you can with Jack and everybody else with Eggleston Grows Green. The details right here on the Muskegon Channel.